Welcome back to the channel, uh, back on the 8 horse mogul project again, working on the mixer still. This is the third uh, video in this series on the mixer repair. Uh, we did the uh, butterfly shaft and then uh, last video we made a spring. This video will be making a throttle plate. Uh, the mixer is responsible for mixing the air and fuel mixture and delivering it to the engine and it's also responsible for metering that mixture to control engine speed. And it does that with a butterfly valve, uh, like a modern carburetor. Um, this one was quite damaged, and uh, I'm just going to make a new one. So I'll bring you in closer and show you what I'm talking about. Here's the throttle plate for the mixer, the original throttle plate. And you can see it's uh, quite pitted, and it was rusted really bad, and it was actually bent. Uh, I tried to put some filler on it and see if I could salvage it or not, but uh, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to make a new one. Um, this is about 2 inches in diameter and about 80 thousandths thick. So I'm going to end up making this on the lathe. And um, then we'll get it installed in the mixer. So let's get to work. Over on the closing lathe now, uh, turning this uh, piece of... Uh, bar down to a dimension. Going to be shooting for uh, 1.7 inches in diameter. I'm taking light cuts because I have no tailstock support and I've got quite a bit of overhang on the lathe here. But uh, I think it'll be all right. Um, we're just uh, taking some light cuts. Here's a little later in the process. I'm uh, getting close to dimension and uh, it's cutting really nice. Um, I think. Uh, once again, 1.7 inches is what I'm shooting for for dimension. Uh, you can see how much overhang I have here, and uh, I'm facing off the end uh, now so I can have it square. Uh, it's important because I'll be cutting a piece off here uh, uh, shortly, but uh, we've got some other work to do. So this is the final uh, uh, machining on, on this uh, rough part here. Uh, once again, 1.7 inches in diameter is what that uh, plate is, and then we'll be um, taking it over on the lathe here shortly. Okay, the lathe work's done. I'm going to be using a radiator clamp to hold this uh, plate in position. Uh, it's got to be perfectly in the center so that uh, I can mark those uh, mounting holes. Those mounting holes are used to hold that plate to the uh, throttle shaft and they need to be in the middle and there's an abused tool, a screwdriver. Um, so now we've got this uh, clamped on here and this hammer I picked out of the trash at the Pawnee Engine Show two years ago. A guy was demoing uh, high-end drill bits and he was drilling holes in this brand new hammer and when he got done with the show he just threw it away and I watched him do it and I went and pulled it out of the trash and I've been using it ever since. Um, so now we're going to use a transfer punch to uh, center punch where those holes are and then we'll take it over on the bridge port. So um, it's very important those holes are in the middle like I said otherwise uh, the shaft and the uh, uh, throttle plate will not pivot properly and it'll bind and then it just won't work right. So um, I come up with this radiator clamp idea to uh, locate it and hold it in place because uh, that dimension is exactly the dimension of the plate and it all just uh, pinches together uh, pretty nicely so uh, I think it uh, works pretty good. Uh, we'll take a look here and uh, see how the center punch is did. Uh, I think you can see them. Yep, they're in there so um, we're ready to go over on the lathe now. Center drilling the drill locations over on the bridge port now. Uh, center drilling, I probably wouldn't have to do this, but I just want to make sure that the drill bit doesn't wander. Even though it's center punched, uh, I just want to make sure that drill goes in straight and goes exactly where I want it. Because I want a good fit on these holes with the uh, plate. And um, here in a little bit we'll be uh, drilling it uh, for a 1024 clearance hole. Um, so you can see there that uh, I've got a pretty good... Uh, uh, center location marked with the center drill and uh, we'll do the other hole and then we'll be uh, drilling here so I'll get lined up on it uh, just kind of eyeballing it here and uh, moving the table back in um, so that I can uh, hit the center of that uh, center punch hole 
and then uh, I'll drill and locate uh, that hole as well and then we'll be ready for drilling. And here's a quick view of drilling the second hole. I don't have to go real deep. Remember this part's only 80 thousandths thick, so I uh, just want to make sure I get uh, through enough that when we part it, part it off, we have good holes in it. New addition to the shop here is a 4x6 uh, horizontal metal bandsaw. Always wanted one of these. They're kind of expensive. But I was able to pick this one up locally and um, it should make short work of cutting this uh, uh, piece of metal here. Uh, I'm going to be cutting um, about 150 thousandths off. Uh, that's thicker than we need because we only need 80, but it gives me enough to machine back and have a uh, true surface there. So uh, there it is. Uh, cut it off just like a slice of bologna and the holes were all the way through. So. Uh, Got our, got our part roughed out here, now we just have to turn it down to final dimension. So I think I have a way of uh, doing that now. So my method's going to be that I'm going to turn this uh, uh, piece upside down. You'll notice I put a chamfer on this piece uh, over in the lathe off camera, uh, right there on the edge. Uh, we'll explain what that's for uh, when I get it over on the lathe. But I'm going to be taking this piece that I cut off and I'm going to be gluing it back on um, upside down so I can turn the side that the saw cut so I can be sure and get a true surface there. Um, super glue works pretty good for this. Uh, this is a Loctite version of uh, super glue. Uh, and then you just use a torch to uh, melt it off of there. So uh, hopefully this works. If it doesn't, then I'll just uh, use the tried and true uh, um, JB Weld, but uh, we'll give this a shot. And uh, it doesn't have to be concentric on there at all, uh, just because we're just going to be facing the end of it. We're not going to be turning the sides of it. So, uh, And it doesn't really matter where those holes are because um, they're oriented correct for mounting and they're nothing to do with this. So I'm going to set this uh, side shaft gear on here for a little bit of weight and then come back in 24 hours and we'll see how this glue works. Back over on the lathe here we're just going to be uh, facing this uh, piece here to thickness going again for 80 thousandths and we're just going to be taking really light cuts on the end and um, just trying to uh, get this down to dimension here. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, yeah, and it's not concentric at all, but that's okay because we're just facing it and it looks like it's wobbling, um, like it's uh, not fixed on there properly, but it actually is. It's just kind of the camera showing that and they go, oh, well, that didn't work. Uh, turns out that glue didn't set up. Um, I read the uh, fine print on it and you're supposed to put water on this metal when you glue metal to metal and I was like, well, I didn't read that. so. Uh, looks like I'll be using some uh, JB Weld on this and then uh, we'll get that chucked up and see how that works. And here we are with the uh, JB Welded uh, throttle plate on there. Um, it's actually a little more concentric than the other one is. But um, this uh, JB Weld works pretty good. It's great stuff for stuff like this and uh, then I can just take a propane torch and uh, heat it up a little bit and loosen it, uh, soften it up, pop it right off there. So we'll make a few passes here and uh, get it down to dimension going for 80 thousandths starting at 150. So I'll make a few passes and then uh, we'll be down to dimension. Well here we are a few minutes later uh, getting closer. Remember that chamfer I said I put on there? It's so I could get the calipers down in there and get an accurate uh, dimension reading here. So we got just a little bit more to go and then uh, we'll be down to dimension and then we'll get it uh, removed from the shaft. Got the mandrel mounted up in the vise and I'm just going to use this uh, propane torch to put a little heat on that uh, JB Weld, uh, soften it up and then uh, I'll be able to pop that uh, throttle plate off of there pretty easy. Um, 600 degrees Fahrenheit breaks down 
uh, JB weld completely but uh, all I'm doing is looking just to soften it up a little bit so uh, four or five hundred degrees is all I got to get that to so I'll just put some uh, heat into it and then we'll be able to pop it off of there so now I'm just using an old screwdriver to get in that groove I had for uh, that chamfer that was used for measurement and uh, I'm just trying to get a good hit on that and get it uh, popped off of there and then we'll take a look at it up oh, there it goes clear across the shop so I'll go get it and then we'll take a look at it and here's a quick view of the part looks like it turned out pretty good I'm pretty happy with it uh, get it cleaned up and then we're done with this part well we got another part done on the mogul project I got this uh, throttle plate made that's the purpose of this video is to make that part we've got one more part to make which is the uh, spring uh, handspring so um, I'll bring you in here a little closer here in a minute and show you these parts and how they kind of go together it's a little hard to uh, uh, visualize how this all works when they're just all apart but I think it'll be clear once we start putting it together so i uh, got a couple more videos coming up I'm pretty excited about one is uh, I'm gonna go through what equipment I take to these shows when I'm gonna be there multiple days all the tools and uh, camping gear all that stuff there's quite a bit of stuff that I have to take uh, I'll be going over some of that and then kind of you know fuel stuff like that uh, what it takes to go to one of these shows it's actually kind of expensive and uh, but I'll be going through the equipment and the, the tent and stuff like that kind of what I take and uh, it's quite a bit of stuff so uh, I think you'll enjoy that video as well and then uh, I've got another engine I'm gonna get ready to run for this show I'm gonna take the four horse mogul like I did last year and we're gonna be running a water pump with that but I'm gonna be taking another engine it's a two and a quarter Sandow uh, Sandow was a company that was a reseller so they would buy engines and then uh, they would get a wholesale price on them and then they would resell them for a higher rate and then that was their profit margin so this is a two and a quarter uh, horse Galloway on a cart and it's tagged as a Sandow I'm thinking it's probably 1915 1918 somewhere in there I bought it about 15 years ago and uh, never did anything with it. I just bought it, stuck it in my building, and, and forgot about it. Well, uh, I saw it the other day, and I thought, well, I'm going to try to get that out and get it running. So I got to go through the fuel system, uh, the igniter, and uh, the rod bearing needs a little bit of attention. So uh, maybe I'll be able to film some of that and show some of that and um, bring you along for that experience as well. So I'll bring you in here a little closer and show you these parts a little closer and uh, then we'll go from there so here we are a little closer here's the uh, throttle shaft that we made here's the old one uh, the new one that uh, doesn't have any wear on it and then this throttle plate we just made goes on there like that with some bolts and then that uh, rotates and that's what controls the uh, fuel mixture here's the old throttle plate you can see what shape it was in not very good and uh, here is that uh, uh, spring handle that we need to make uh, and that'll be in the next video in the series so uh, just a few more parts and um, we'll be getting this uh, mixer back together and move on to the next parts well thanks for watching the video um, it's kind of a long drawn-out process restoring one of these old engines I really like it uh, it's very satisfying when you uh, get done with it and it's very satisfying during the whole process too. I know it can get a little boring and I appreciate everybody hanging around and uh, watching this process, but this is really what it takes. Uh, YouTube editing uh, cuts out a lot of hours of work and it'll make something look like you restored it in 20 minutes uh, with some of these videos and it's just not the way it is. It takes months and months to do this and do it properly and uh, especially working a full-time job with uh, doing it as well. So uh, I'm going to try to be getting videos up uh, on a weekly basis again if I can, and uh, we're going to go from there. But uh, for now, I really appreciate everybody watching the videos, and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really like the uh, comments and the likes, and uh, of course the 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 uh, subscribership uh, helps the channel out and helps the videos uh, come up uh, more frequently on searches and stuff so uh, anyway uh, thanks for watching again and see you in the next video